ago, Walter Williams pointed out, government handouts encourage people not to try. They may never learn to pull themselves out of poverty one step at a time. Like some giant drug pusher, their government has lured them into dependency on a system that will maintain them in permanent poverty. In every respect, welfare has backfired. Government's like a giant drug pusher? <laughs> That's absolutely right. The welfare state has done to black Americans what slavery could not have done, the harshest Jim Crow laws and racism could not have done, namely, break up the black family. That is, today, uh, just slightly over 30% of black kids live in two-parent families. Historically, from 1870s on up to about the 1940s, and depending on the city, 75 to 90 percent of black kids live in two-parent families. Illegitimacy rate is 70 percent among blacks, where that is unprecedented in our history. Now, it's not just a matter of a racial thing. In Sweden, is the mother of the welfare state, and illegitimacy in Sweden is 54 percent. And why does a welfare state create illegitimacy? Well, because, look, if you, if you subsidize anything, you're going to get surpluses of it. And if you tax something, you're going to get less of it. If you did not get welfare, then people would decide, I'm going to go out and get a job. I'm going to live more responsibly. I'm going to get married before I have children. <laughs> that's, that's right, yeah. But the welfare state actually discouraged some men from marrying the woman. Oh, yes. The, she would lose the check. That's right. The government has said to, to many young women, I am the father. Yeah, and so the father, black males, have become dispensable. Exactly what they've been doing. The whole welfare system is designed to replace the black man with the system as the black woman's husband. So the man ain't there, but the judge is your husband. The social worker is your husband. The man who gives out the, the welfare check, he's your husband. The man who gives you the uh, Section 8 housing, he's your husband. So what they've done in America is they've created a situation where the black woman doesn't need the black man for nothing. Even if she wants your money, she doesn't have to ask you. She can go and have the white man dig in your pockets and take it for her. So you got this relationship between the black man and the black woman where if the sister is not careful, she can be manipulated into being used as a secret weapon of oppression against her own man. We are the only men whose women do not have to come and consult with us before they do anything else. This is a direct outgrowth of slavery and it was engineered. That's why in America, black women make more money than black men. That's not true for no other group. Black women have more education than black men. That's not true for any other group. We're not faulting our sisters or knocking them in no way. And I want my sisters to understand that. We're just analyzing this system, this structure that's been created that empowers the sister, disempowers the man, and now convinces her that he's worthless and she don't need him and she'd be better off without him. The sisters have to understand that what's being done to black men isn't being done by black men. It's being done by the invisible hand of white supremacy. But a lot of our women can't see this onslaught. And as a result of that, they buy into the mindset that says the reason you fail and I succeed is because I am more concerned about my future than you are. And nothing could be further from the truth. And the black man has to make sure we don't blame the black woman for her excess education or income. Let's use that strategically. If she's making the money, so be it. Pass that money off to us so we can build the institutions. It's not automatically a problem that you make more money than me. It's not automatically a problem that you have more education than me if we can still work together. But if you buy into the mindset of the dominant society as to the reasons why you're doing better than me, then it becomes a problem when you ingest the white supremacy Kool-Aid and start believing in the mythology of the black man based on his white supremacy.